Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to Boss Up Academy. Today I have Tanero Natty. <laughs> um, That's me. You introduce yourself so we um, can get started. Oh, well, shit. You know, this your boy Natty, you know, your neighborhood tattoo guru. Uh, you know, founder, owner, operator, big boss, slaughterhouse tattoos. Y'all know what it is. And uh, if any single ladies out here, you know, I like long walks on the beach. I like puppies. I like going camping. I like s'mores. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's me. All in a nutshell. Okay. Well, before we jump into this, we're going to let Facebook build our audience. Don't forget to log on to Boss Up Academy. We are coming on every Monday night, bringing you different business owners every Monday at 9 p.m. to give you different business strategies, um, more insight to different businesses and how they do things. And, and tonight we're doing monetizing your craft. We also are on IG as well as um, YouTube and Twitter. <laughs> viewers on here we already have a no comment michelle williams love that y'all are doing this keep up the good work thank you michelle um we're gonna go ahead and get started jump right into it um i know you the big boss oh you better look you better hey heavy on the big though <laughs> heavy on the big like right, this hard working that's all this hard working Okay, so we're going to jump right into it. I wanted you to kind of tell people uh, overall about your business, and then we're going to go into how they can monetize any business that they are in, no matter what lane they are in. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Um, I mean, as far as what I do, I mean, everybody know I'm the tattoo guru. But one thing I find with any business, if you're going to endeavor into it, how I went into mind, it was no plan B. My plan B was to make the plan A work, you know, and you actually going to get out what you put in, number one. So um, I basically just, I, like you say, like we said tonight, monetize my craft by like, look, okay, this is what I'm good at. And that's a lot of things I've noticed in business. People don't have a passion for it. They see somebody else, you know, they see somebody else getting the bag. They see somebody else doing this, so they jump in that lane, and you don't have have the passion for it. You have to have a passion for what you're going to start a business about, or you're looking at failure. So, I mean, I knew I had a passion for artwork. I knew I had a passion for drawing, and I always got clowned in high school because I had pretty handwriting. Now, I was like, you know what? One day, this handwriting going to make me some paper. And look where we at. So, you know, just find. I mean, basically, structure wise, just find what you love to do and invest into it. And invest in what you love to do and just look and 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 basically just put all into it because you're gonna get all out of it. And so when you say invest, a lot of people think when you say invest that you're talking about money. Nah, There's time money. is time is the most critical investment because it's gonna be long nights, it's gonna be lonely nights, 
it's going to be those nights where you sitting, you're trying to get your knowledge curve up. You know, you might be doing practical application. It might be nights where you might be doing pro bono work. It might be days where, you know, you stressed out. So, you, you know, it's just the investment is basically it comes internally. You know, you invest a lot of time into building a business. It's like a kid, you know, it's like a kid. If you you, you got to give that, you got to get that baby. You got to feed it. You got to nurture it. You got to make sure it's still able to function. You know, it is a lot of people. They end up dropping their babies off at their grandmama house. And they wonder why the business is not flourishing because you have to put that time in. That's the biggest investment. That's the biggest investment. So a lot of people and, and, and go back to the beginning when you started out. Mm. Were you want to go all the way back there? when you started. Oh, see, now look, I'm going to tell you when I started. Um, I'm going to give you the whole rundown. I'm going to give you the whole rundown. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm going to give you the whole rundown. I was working this warehouse. Well, basically what it was, I had a, um, I had a, a state-funded vacation. And um, when I came home from vacation, I was working this warehouse job, 7 at night, 7 in the morning. And... And while I was working, you know, I used to always have my sketch pad. I used to always be drawing while I'm working. And um, the floor manager came up to me. And he was like, hey, you have nothing else to do but to be drawing on my clock. That's what he said. I was like, mm, I'm about to go back on vacation. <laughs> I'm about to go back on vacation because you are not talking to me like that. So what, I did, so what I did, I went on lunch break and I never came back. And, but at the same time, you know, that was my sign because somebody came to me about their clock, but I'm sitting on their clock, but I'm doing what I'm passionate about, which is artwork. So I sat down, I was like, mm, okay, what can I do from here? Cause rent due in like about 14 more days. You know what I mean? So, and I always wanted, you know, and I always been a lover of tattoo work. So I'm like, you know what? But the biggest thing though, eat before I even go any further, I talked to three people who I knew were tattoo artists before I even bought, before I even bought a tattoo machine, before I even bought some gloves, before I bought anything, I talked to three people. And that's what I always tell a lot of people. If you're going to endeavor into a craft, talk to three people who are already successful in that craft. They'll give you, they'll give you the do's and don'ts, the ins and outs. So, and um, I had a friend of mine, you know, he actually, he, you know, he kind of like put the battery in my back. He was like, look, man, you can do this shit. You're like, look, but it's going to take this, going to take this, going to take that. It's going to take time. It's going to take patience. So I had, I had a total of three hundred and twenty six dollars in my in my bank account. Rent at the time was like about seven fifty. So I got to do something quick. I got to make some shape. So what I did, I bought my equipment, and um, my equipment was three hundred and eighteen dollars. Three hundred eighteen. I got eight dollars left. So I invested that time into getting my knowledge curve up, get my knowledge curve up. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, cool. If I can make, look, I got, I got two weeks left before rent is due. Yeah, yeah. So if I can go ahead, if I can make $50 a day to get me right here, to get me to this point, I'm good. And that's what it was. It was a constant grind, constant grind, constant grind. And I found myself loving what I did. You know what I mean? I found myself being able to, um, no, meet new people and do, and just basically do what I love to do and have a service. And I found out I ain't gonna lie. From day one, I was dope. I was dope. I ain't gonna lie. I've never done a bad tattoo. Never. <laughs> From day one. I mean, you know, it was it was like God say, look, hey, go to McDonald's, get that chicken sandwich, and don't come back. And that's what I did. <laughs> but now, but all jokes aside, though, you know, you have to. You had to be passionate about it. That's what it was for me. I had to be passionate about it. And it was no plan B. So, so, okay. Now, putting artwork on somebody's body is very critical, right? It is. It is. So, and how did you get people to have enough confidence in you to know you just bought a tattoo machine? And if I let him put something on my body, <laughs> it's kind of like permanent. How do you convince people? And that's what people don't understand. How do you get people to trust you enough to use your services, especially as something as hard as putting something permanent on somebody else's body? With me, I started small. I started small. 
You know, I didn't jump out there. I'm not doing uh, no baby portraits. I'm not jumping out there. I'm not doing no back murals. I'm not doing no full sleeve. I started small. Stars and hearts. Oh, you like stars? Guess what? Let me do them stars for you. And it was a lot of pro bono work. It was a lot of free work. It was a lot of free work. And that's why I like, you know, I treat my first client like my last client. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> there was a lot of people who had uh, had that faith in me. But one thing I always notice, if you if you are upfront and honest, I let hey, I let everybody know, look here, man. I did not start doing this shit. I did not start doing it. I don't want to hear nothing. If you're going to let me do it, let me do it. It ain't going to cost you nothing. What's up, Tico? But yeah, and that's just what it was. I had people like, you know what? So they already knew it. I mean, I, you know, I drew back in the day and you know what I mean? Everything else, but it's not about convincing. It's about selling it and being honest with what you can do and what you can't do. And that's do what you, it was. For, go ahead. I'm sorry. Your, your confidence level. What do you, what part do you think played in your level of confidence and how you display your confidence to those people? Oh, that's paramount. That's paramount. That's like, you don't want to go to a dentist and be, he'd be like, uh, I think I can do this uh, root canal. <laughs> You're not going to get in that chair. But I was honest about what I could do and what I couldn't do. Like people are coming to me like, look, I want to get this done. I want to get that done. I can't do that shit. I let them know. I can't do that shit. And I'm one, I'm just starting out. But if you want some stars, you want some hearts. And I started there because that's your basic line work. You feel what I'm saying? That was my basic line work. So I might look, I'm gonna just keep it right here. So um, so did you mostly do people that you know, or how did you get into tap into those have not met people? Because oh, see, a lot of your, your people are not gonna support you, and a lot of people go into business thinking their sphere of influence is gonna be their support system, and they find out then people ain't gonna support you. But I can honestly say though, Erica. I didn't run into that. I didn't run into that. And I hear that a lot. You know, they say, uh, family and friends would be the first ones not to support. My family and friends supported the shit out of me. I mean, I can honestly say that. I mean, I cannot say they did not support. And and, and from there with, with my, uh, I ain't gonna say it was a target. It was a target group, but let me start right here. Let me start with the family and friends that I know that have, that have tattoos. Well, they might've had a tattoo already. Look, let me touch that up for you. You know what I mean? And so even in that, even in that aspect, my confidence built their confidence in me built. So they're going to tell somebody else. I ain't gonna lie. My business basically grew off of word of mouth for the first, yeah, for the first three, four years. Because you've been in tattoos for how many years now? Uh, it's going on 12 years, 12 years, 12 long years, 12 long, 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 long years. I'm tired of y'all dudes. <laughs> Facebook wasn't as big then as it is now, right? Not as big, but it was it was it was a critical platform though, you know. It was it was, it was a good platform. But I mean people Because when I started it was no Instagram. When I started tattooing, it was no Instagram, so Facebook was it. Or either you had a MySpace, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And they said that your family probably trusts you because they knew you would keep it real. They trusted you because your family knows you best a lot of times. So Indeed. some family know when they got little shaky family members. Right. Yeah. You know, you got you got John John. And he talking about uh, flipping houses and he don't have a house. You know what I mean? So but I came with what I came with what I had. Look, this is what I got right here. This is what I can do. This is what I can't do because I can't lie to you because guess what? I got to see you at grandma's house every Sunday. And that's going to be a problem. So I might well keep it 100 with you and let you know what I can do and can't do. And we go from there. Honest business. So what advice? So once you kind of started building your clientele and then we, we talk about on here being self-employed, do you have, and right now you are a solo producer, right? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any intentions on changing that? Uh, honestly, I don't play well with others. <laughs> I don't play well with others. And, you know, I don't know if you remember, you know, but I had a shop on South Boulevard, like back in 2000, where from 2010 to 2012. And 
it kind of like, you know, with, with having to manage, I ain't going to say employees, but manage other individuals. You know what I mean? Because I'm the one who has to pay the overhead. You feel me? I got to pay the overhead. So if they don't come to work or they're not bringing in business into the shop, guess whose pocket that's coming out of? That's mine. And I seen, I was at the shop and I'm like, yo, I'm in here for 10, 12 hours. You know what I mean? Trying to make some shake. Well, I ain't going to say trying to make some shake, but, you know, I'm bringing in the bulk of the clientele. And it got to the point, it was like, look, how can I put it? If they don't work, they don't eat because I can't keep feeding them. So that's why I went ahead. Look, I dissolved the shop. I kept the shop name and I prefer just to work with myself and on the, on the, on the back end, if anybody wants to do business, we can do that. Like if they want a guest spot from that, yeah, we can do that and I'll break bread with them. But other than but employees or working with other artists, I can't do it. I can't and do so, it. And a lot of people have people telling them or they looking at social media saying, oh, I need to do this this way or I do need to do that that way. But a lot of these people are putting themselves in a hole or they're not making money because they carry in too much overhead to look good. Right. But they not making the money that they should be making, but they rather have clout and look good than to make the money match the clout. And you know, and and even with that. Because everybody like, especially like with the tattoo industry, everybody like to say my shop, my shop. You're paying rent. It's not yours. It's not yours. So you have to minimize costs, maximize profit. You know what I mean? And that's why, like with me, I took it in house. I took it in house. Um, I went to I went to uh, I went to um, D Heck. They were like, look, you need this space, this space. You need this, 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 and this. So that's where I developed. I developed that. And I went ahead and got everything as business residential. So this is my workspace at home. This is my living space at home. Completely separated and got my license. And that's how I do business now. You know, and it's just like, you know, it's it's one of those things where people, like you say, people will tell you what you should do. But you have to do what works best for you. Now, that's cool if you got a team of people. If you have... If it's you and you got five other artists, it's easier to go into the tattoo industry and y'all go out and get a, a, a brick and mortar building and say, that's the shop. It's easier. But if you're working by yourself, I mean, the best thing to do, I mean, even even with a private studio, private studio might be the best route. It just depends on your clientele and what you're comfortable with. Okay. So that's what I want people to understand that you don't, that there are no rules in business. Oh, no. that, that you have to find your own path, follow it, make it work for you. But at the end of the day, none of that, none of your name and likes, name on signs, followers, it's all about what's in that bank account. Yes, yeah, look, it's about my name on the on the bag. <laughs> it's not about my name on the building. It's about my name on the bag. And you know, and I ain't gonna lie, I caught a lot of flat. I caught a lot of flack. And you know what I mean? Like, I still catch a little flack. Look, where your shop at? Crib. And I don't have no problem saying that. Because, see, the first thing a person, they're going to equate, they equate good work with a tattoo shop. They equate bad tattoos somebody working at the crib. You know what I mean? And that's totally not the case anymore because you have people, like you say, who are, sole proprietors guess what why would i go out here and spend 18 19 two thousand dollars a month and it's just me i don't need that much space i'm five four 160 pounds i don't need a whole building i don't need a whole building so i use the space that i have to maximize my profit and zo says and still one of the best tattoo artists i know only one gonna draw on me <laughs> Ah, oh, his ass scared. <laughs> <laughs> his ass scared. <laughs> yeah, but you I know, think that people get caught up in LLC, looking good, followers, likes, loves, but does that equate money? It don't. It don't equate success. Day, you should be not only in business for money, 
but you should be in business for time. Time. Um, freedom of what you want to do. Flexibility. You know, and that was one of the things with me, but I ain't going to lie, though, you know, the thing about it, when you start that, when you start that business up, is you're not going to have a lot of time. You're not going to have a lot of time because you're working on getting that knowledge curve up. You're working on getting your name out there. Because I ain't going to lie to you, Erica. I remember um, when they had Bubble at the epicenter. They had Bubble on Sundays. I used to always leave the house with 200 business cards. With 200 business cards. Because, you know, from my, I mean, from my standpoint, if I pass out 200 cards, at least 20 people going to hit me back. It might be 180 cars that somebody might be breaking reefer up on. Okay, cool. But if there's 20 people call me back, guess what? I got 20 new clients off of these 200 cars. So no matter where I went, I had a back pocket full of business cars. Like everybody, they popping bottles in the club. I'm popping cars on the table. You know what I mean? And people have to understand that's the time that you have to invest into that business. <clears throat> so, yeah, and Deanna caught... Um said it's a numbers game. Definitely, definitely. And then Lonzo wants you to stop telling all his business. <laughs> he ain't got no business. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dog, though. <laughs> but he's scared. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I wanna, and, because I think that people just, just don't understand that concept, and it's okay. So, but that work-life balance, it comes into play now. Because yes. You are your business, right? right? So how do you free yourself out for you to have that time to yourself so you're not pulling 18, 20 hours every day to keep things going? You know, and um, it basically, I, you know, I just had to pivot. I had to pivot within the business. I had to look at, <clears throat> I had to look at the tattoo industry. Instead of looking at what the clients need, I had to turn, I had to pivot and see, what do tattoo artists need? You know what I mean? It's not just clients. You also can service tattoo. You can also can service tattoo artists. So I sat there. I was like, damn, how can I pivot and service them as well? With I mean, with what I have to offer. So what, uh, what I did, I mean, I don't, not to get too in depth with it, but a lot of tattoo artists work with uh, iPads now. You know, it's not like you go into the tattoo shop, you flicking through the racks and you pick out a design, you know, it's not like that anymore because a lot of designs are customized. So what I did, a lot of tattoo artists, they use iPads and they use an app called Procreate. And basically with Procreate, you have like brush sets. What I mean by a brush set is sort of like the rack on the wall. If you want a rose, you pick it out. But the brush sets, you basically touch it and you know what I mean? You can move it around on the iPad. You can resize it and do this and customize that design for them. So I was like, damn, you know what? Why don't I just develop my own brush sets? So that way, if it's an artist that likes what Natty do, because everybody might not like my style, but if it's an artist that likes what I do, like, look, boom, I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna buy this rose brush set, brush set from Natty's website or from Linktree, which I have both, um, I have them posted. So I developed my brush sets with the simple designs first. You know, because everybody, everybody loves roses. Everybody loves butterflies. Everybody, and I started small. Then I started customizing my brush sets according to my style of work, which is you no know, basically Afrocentric work. And I posted them on the, I posted them on my Leak Tree account, and and it's like you know, they, they sell itself. So that's how I kind of like get myself off of being hands on and working every day to not missing out on the bag, you know, and you have to pivot. And even with, um, and even with the, uh, and even with the nummy cream that I do also for all tattoo services, <laughs> you, know, you got to rub the hand. You got to rub your hand when you're selling somebody something with the tattoo service that I offer. I, I approached, I mean, I went through like maybe four or five different brands. I mean, like working on myself before I'm presented it to a client because I want to make sure it works. And I went through like four or five different brands and I found this one brand. I was like, yo, this shit the truth. You know what I mean? Because I had like four hours of, I mean, pain-free tattooing on myself. So I reached out to him. I reached out to the company. I let them know, look, this is what I do. This, this is who I am. Yada, yada, yada. And they gave me an endorsement deal. I'm talking like the next day. So I offered that product, you know what I mean, via, I mean, via my Linktree account, um, 
Facebook message, text, however you want to get it. Guess what? I'm going to drop it off. Yeah. And, you know, you have to, and those are the products that I basically use to keep me from having to be tattooed. I take two clients a day. That's it. Two clients a day. And that's how I free up my time with it. Okay. So I do want to get into, so that people that may not be in the tattooing business, but I want to give them business ideas that you don't always have to see your competitors as your competition. Exactly. You can see them as another bag. That's it. And how are you going to monetize your business, especially when you got people following you, looking at you, they want to do what you do, right? So right. then you don't see them as competition. You say, okay, I'm going to sell y'all numbing cream. I'm going to provide you with duplications of my work, right? Right. You are still who you are. And I see a lot of people want to be hoarders of their talent, right? Oh, no. And so you got to still, people are going to still want you like Lonzo. Nobody's going to get on my body, but Natty. Right. I don't care how Pause. many brush strokes, how Pause. many, huh? Pause. 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 <laughs> nah, go ahead. You, you, look, you missed it. I did. You know, I was <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So it doesn't matter how many um, brush strokes or whatever that you um, sell, I still want you. But at the same time, people that have not met group the other people's sphere of influence and you can sell on the World Wide Web. So that means you can put your work in California Bingo. as long as those people are producing. So not only looking at how you can monetize your craft, but looking at your competitors and seeing how can I break bread with them and right. make it some a piece of their pie by making money off of my competitors and not seeing them as competition. Yeah, yeah. Turn you, I basically turn competitors and custom into customers. You know what I mean? If you offering a service, turn competitors into well potential competitors. Because like I tell everybody, I only compete with me. I only compete with me because I'm in my lane. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to ride past you. I'm not trying to get to this point first. I'm riding in my lane. So I, I, I choose. But I'll say this: people that are in the same craft. I mean, just turn them into turn them into customers. If it's something that I mean, you know, because if it's something that you're doing, and you can make it easier on them, hey, guess what? I got this. I got this. I got this. And nine times out of ten, everybody is looking for an easier way to do their job. Looking for a more efficient way to do their job. They're looking for a more a less time consuming way to do their job. So if Natty has a brush set with thirty roses. Instead of me having to sit here and draw a rose, I can just buy this brush set, tap a button, tap the screen, and it's right there. I just made it easy for you to do your job. So, I mean, that's that's what it's all about, pivoting. Uh, it is brush set, not brush set. Stroke. Yeah, you said brush stroke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you been, yeah, you been, yeah. It's okay, though. We know what you meant. <laughs> you got a new customer on here or a former customer. I don't know which one, but boss is saying he needs his back done for summer 23. What are you going to do to his back? Old ass nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, but, hit me up, but hit me up, though, boss. And then we got our good friend, Nita Simmons. I love y'all. We love her, too. I always tell That's her my she's sister. my sister from another mother. Mister. Sister from another mister. Another mister. Yeah, sister from another mister. His mother from another brother. <laughs> <laughs> mother from another mother. And then, yeah, working together. And then um, at, uh, Moses. What's up, fam? But, yes, so people, they got to start seeing people, other people in their field as potential clients. Potential clients. Potential customers, yeah. And Make that's going to help you gain more money. Look, I, I ain't going to lie to you, Erica. Whenever, whenever I, um, I actually got that insight. Cause like one thing about it, you know, anybody that's in the tattoo industry, you know, I have artists that I look up to. I ain't going to say look up to, that I look at and, I, and I, I love their work. And I use those artists as motivation. I don't use those artists as validation. 
You feel what I'm saying? Because I'm going to always do what I do, but I can see something that somebody else did. I'm like, look, let me let me throw a little bit of that sauce in here, what I already got going on, what I got cooking. But a lot of times, people, people get out here and try to mimic the next person and what they're doing, whether it be, whether it be, hell, I don't give a damn whether they cooking tacos, whether they making hamburgers, make it your way. You know what I mean? You don't go to McDonald's and, and uh, a Big Mac tastes like a Whopper, but it's still a hamburger. You feel me? So just do it your way. And make it work. They say you can have the recipe, but the sauce ain't going to be the same. The sauce ain't going to be the same. You know what I mean? That first bite going to let you know what's right. <laughs> uh, Ricky, our other <laughs> brother, um, I salute you and Erica. Motivation. And um, Keisha is loving the energy. Yeah, you know, we keep it cool, keep it smooth. So, what advice would you tell your 20-year-old self? My 20-year-old self? Stay out of jail, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Stay your ass out of jail. Stop listening to rap music. Nah, nah for <laughs> real, like my 20-year-old self. Well, you got to look at it, though, Erica. When I was 20, I was in the military. So, you know, I was already kind of like structured you know what I mean? In that sense. But now what I would tell my 18 year old self, stay out of jail, boy. <laughs> 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 no, no, nah, but seriously though, just uh, find what you love to do. I mean, find what you love to do and just hone in on that. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit here and act like I had it all figured out. I, and I still don't. I still don't. But one thing I would tell my 18 year old self is like, find what you love to do and grow it. And grow it. Give yourself at least if you if you got something you love to do. I don't give I don't give a damn if you like making candles. Give yourself two hours to make candles, because in those two hours, that turns into what fourteen hours a week. You know what I mean? And you are honing your craft. You're getting better at it. You're finding new things out about it. But a lot of people have something that they love to do, and they don't even tap into it. They don't even try. That's the biggest. That's the biggest misstep in starting a business is not trying. It's not trying. And then um, Joseph Foster, a.k.a. Darnell. Darnell. So I need Taylor to Street. find a mentor or guy because I don't know it all because uh, I need some good knowledge. 2023 change for the bag is my motto. Well, cause I mean, you know, and, and with that cause, you have to find, I mean, like you say, like I said, find what you love to do and find you three professionals. It's easy. It's easy. You know, cause you can reach out to people. You can reach out to a, you can reach out to somebody in Bangladesh. You know what I mean? We have social media. Now you have those outlets. Whenever you, whenever you go on your computer, instead of typing in Pornhub, type in what, <laughs> type in what you love to do. In Google, type in what you love to do and see who to and type in top five or top ten individuals in that crab and reach out. That's it. You'll be amazed who reach back out though, who return that. And a lot of people think about the crab bucket mentality, but more more successful people do not have that mentality as those people that are still trying to make it. Would you and agree or disagree? I agree. I agree. And um and with that analogy, I always tell people like this, crabs in a bucket are not actually pulling each other down. They're actually trying to build a ladder to get out the pot. But they don't have any thumbs. And they keep sliding back down because they back they back slick. So they just don't have the resources. They have the right mentality to help everybody get up. But they don't have the resources, so they keep falling back down. So what I tell everybody is this right here. Um, Find you ten. We well, find you three people who are successful in whatever craft you want to be in, and talk to them. You can't talk to somebody who's trying to make it out the pot with you. You can't. You had to talk to somebody who's already out the pot, and that's what you have to do to gain that knowledge. Because the person in the pot with you, he like, hey, look, we trying to help each other, but at the same time, you're hurting each other. Right. And that's a good way to put it because I think that people don't realize that the haters are at the bottom. Always. I mean, I've never met a hater. I, I don't see them. I mean, I hear about it from somebody else, but yeah. let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen a fight at the bank? 
You ain't never seen nobody fighting at the bank. What, right or wrong? No. You, have never, you have never seen a fight at the bank. So guess what? That's where I'm going to stay at. Except for, I take that back. I, there was a video that went viral the other week, but they went, the, the lady owed, had some NSF fees and they was trying to take her check and she did go over the counter. But, see, <laughs> but look what you just said. Insufficient funds. <laughs> People who are making deposits, we ain't, look, we ain't, hey, look, we ain't throwing no blows. <laughs> Cynthia McCur uh, McCoury, um, knowledge is power. And that's the part that people don't get. That self-education will make you a fortune. I'm and telling knowledge. You. Um, a lot of people don't understand, too. No. K-N-O-W. If you drop the K and you drop the W, you got no. But if that's you got it. knowledge and wisdom... You know you're gonna get to the bag. You're gonna get to the bag. I mean, you know, and that's why I always say you have to you have to invest that time to get that knowledge curve up. Cause once you put that, once you get that knowledge curve up, guess what? You can write your own check. You can write your own check because can't nobody tell you, oh, well, you didn't do this like this. Oh, you didn't do it like that. I mean, you already got that knowledge curve up, so you already know how to do it flawlessly. And you know, and I tell people, always be a student of your crab. I mean, I'm I'm not going to sit here like I know everything, but I'm always learning and I'm always, I'm always learning. Well, how do you, how do you go about, all, how do you, what do you do to be in always learning mode? What kind of things do you do? Because see what a lot of people may not realize with tattoo work, it ties into any aspect of artwork, whether you are doing, um, whether you're airbrushing, whether you are, uh, doing murals on buildings, whether you are doing charcoal paintings, whether you are drawing on paper. The only difference is, is that the skin is a living canvas. You feel me? And so I, I, I jump in, I paint. I mean, that's why you know I, I sit here and I paint. I see what, what colors blend with what colors well. Um, I might, I might sit and, um, I might sit and do a, a charcoal drawing because, you know, I'm like, look, let me practice these noses. You know what I mean? Let me practice these eyes. Let me practice these eyelashes. It's like those small little details that I sit and I practice every day. I might draw like about 30 noses a day. Big noses, little noses, round noses, pointed noses. But you know, it but it helps hone my craft with those little fine details. You know what I mean? Or I might sit here and, and draw eyelashes all day. Just draw eyes all day. You always have to be a student of your craft because it's always, it's always that little small little mm, that somebody else may be doing that you are not. So you had to tune into that, you know, and that's what I do. Now, what kind of outsource, outside resources do you use to um, keep your craft going? I got a uh, OnlyFans page. <laughs> 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 I've been, I've been doing, I've been doing tattoos with baby oil on. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, but seriously though, I mean, <laughs> they keep the income flowing. You know, like I said before, you know, when it comes down to my brush sets, when it comes down to the endorsement deal with TKTX with the numbing cream, and you know, that's, that's pretty much right now. That's where I'm at with tattooing, numbing cream promotion, and my brush set sales. You know, so that's where I'm kind of at. Right now. That's like my that's my that's my holy trinity right now, but. It's, it's, it's different arenas that I want to tap into when it comes down to the tattoo industry. I wanted to, like me personally, I wanted to put together, uh, um, I wanted to put together like an African-American artist tattoo show here in Charlotte. You know, it, I mean, just to highlight some of the African-American artists here in Charlotte, because there are a lot of dope artists, you know. So that's one thing that I'm putting together, you know, and, you know, of course, with sponsorship with that and everything else, you know. But other than that, man, you know, I'm just keeping it, I'm keeping it, you know I mean, I'm keeping it kids. I mean, I'm keeping it simple. Now, if you could go, we talked about what advice you would give your 20-year-old self. Now, uh -huh. what would you give, what kind of business advice would you give to your first year in business self? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. That's a lot. I ain't gonna lie. That's loaded. Um, Number one, I mean, you know, because I never had a problem with starting, but make sure that you have, I mean, just, how can I put it? How can I put it? 
don't have a problem with starting, but just just know everything's not a failure. You know, because I thought if I wasn't moving like this, I wasn't getting this out. It was a failure and it wasn't. And a lot of people, I would tell myself, don't look at everything as a failure. Sometimes it's a lesson. Learn from it. Uh, number two, shit, structure. If you plan on if you plan on starting a business and you're passionate about it and you're adamant about it and you're serious about it, you know, because it's cool. It's cool to have a hustle. It's cool to have a hustle. But, you know, because hustle stand. You know what hustle stand for, right? Go ahead, tell us. It stands for how you stack that loot every day. H H U S T L E. That's how you stack that loot every day. You know, if you got a little hustle, okay, cool. But if you plan on turning that to a business. I mean, structure is, 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 it definitely has to be in place. I mean, it starts with getting your EIN. It starts with, you know what I mean? Registering your business. You know what I mean? And those are the basic two steps. Cause once you see that now, guess what? The baby right there. Only thing you got to do is feed it. Um, it says raise the ball, open your mind to all possibilities. And then we have patience, a learning experience. On game, on game. So what do you do to keep yourself or in, in when you were in the building stage of your business, what did you do to keep your head or your mind in the game? Uh, in all honesty, Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of Hennessy nights. You know what I mean? I just like, damn. You know, I was sitting there thinking like, shit, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm going to do this shit. Let me get my Hennessy. <laughs> Yes, I do. You know what I mean? And you just had to give yourself a mental check. You had to give yourself a mental check all the time, man. And look, daily. I mean, to this day, it's been 12 years, Erica. And I have mornings, you know what I mean, when I get up. Because I tell everybody all the time, when you are doing business for yourself, you are in business for yourself, you are the, you are the worst boss. I'm the worst boss. Because I won't give myself no time off. I won't tell myself I need a break. I be saying, look, I go all day. I probably won't even eat. I have a cup of coffee and I'm tattooing like hell, you know, something like that. I'm the worst boss and I work for myself. So I had to differentiate, you know what I mean, between being boss and being employee all in one. So I had to give myself a check every morning. When I get up and I'm brushing these little ass teeth, I be like, look, man, we ain't finna, look, we ain't going to be tattooing all day. Look, we're going to got them go get some crab legs and some clams a little bit later. You know what I mean? I had to tell myself what I'm going to do that day. Because if I don't structure my day and I don't tell me, because who else going to tell me? Can't nobody else tell me what they go, you know what I mean? So I had to tell myself what I'm going to do. And I have to have that structure. And that's what, you know, and that's what basically keeps me, I mean, ready to go. And I know how to take a break. I know how to take a break. Cause I'll check out on y'all there. Oh, yeah. Now, what about, now, okay, so that means that you've got a very strong work ethic, right? But oh. I see, and, and I'm not going to call this person out that I talked to, and I don't know if they're still on here or not, but people that do the exact opposite. Some people think that working for yourself means you on break all day. Shit. 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 You ain't never on break. You ain't never on break, you know, and that's the and that's the difference between a thriving business and a and, and an unsuccessful business. I'm never on break, no matter where I go, you know. And sometimes, you know, it gets to the point to where, you know, you know, I had to, you know, I had to let people know, hey, look, man, I'm chilling. You know, what I, mean? I don't want to talk about that right now, but I understand I'm the face of my business. I'm my own commercial. So if I go out somewhere and somebody wants to talk about a tattoo, guess what? Damn, I should have stayed my ass at home if I ain't want to talk to nobody. So you know, it just it just take it just it just accepting what you ask for. You no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, because I, I see a lot of people they end up back at a nine to five job, right? Right. Because they don't have structure, they don't have the discipline. They waking up at eleven o'clock. They go on to lunch at 12 o'clock. They come back off of lunch at 2 o'clock. They go on home at 4 o'clock. And when the bills are due. Ain't nobody. If my family supported me, if my friends supported me, but at the same time, are you even are you even offering that service to friends and family? And I, you know, and I have this conversation with a lot of people. I would never. Well, I haven't. I would never sit and say, "Look, if my friends and family didn't do this, or they need to do that." 
Because at the end of the day, I got a homegirl right now. Wonderful chef. Wonderful chef. I've never tasted the food. I've never tasted the food, but you want me, you know I mean? But you expect people to post it and repost it. We don't even know what it tastes like. I don't care. My grandmama had a pork chop shop. If I've never had that pork chop, guess what? Grandmama, you're not getting reposted. You know what <laughs> I mean, but people have to understand that in business, you know, and a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't. And like um, Tico just said, I'm on the grind now. I do a nine to five and then he build bikes until one o'clock in the morning. But, and me and Tico had that conversation. Me and Tico had that conversation. I'm like, bro, you because he has a passion for it. You feel me? So when you have a passion for something, it's not like you're working. I mean, you know, I, I tell everybody I have a for profit. Like when I started tattooing, I had a for profit and a non profit. Tattooing was my non profit. Guess what? Because I was making non profit. I had my job, which was my for profit. I went to work for that profit. But once my non profit started generating, I don't need that no more because this is my for profit now. So now I'm going to go ahead and invest totally into this one. Well, not to say I didn't invest totally in this one in the first foremost because shit, I quit my job and I ain't have shit going on. But, you know, but like, you know, me and Tico talked about, I'm like, bro, he has a passion for something and he's good at it and he liked doing it. You know what I mean? And shit, Tico might not want to say it, but hell, his shit, building bikes, but mm, get that bag, man. <laughs> and um, how do you get to a level where a lot of people are saying, okay, how is he only doing two people a day? I mean, it's it's crap elevation. It's crap elevation. Like I said, you know, when I started, I was doing hearts and stars. You know what I mean? Hearts and stars ain't going to get it. And it's been 12 years, so you know, you progress in your artwork. You go from hearts and stars to um, roses and butterflies, roses and butterflies to um, what else uh, everybody like? We'll put it like this. You elevate to bigger pieces. So once people know, okay, look, this is what he's known for. He's known for bigger pieces. Because so people know I'm not going to do hearts and butterflies no more. I did that when I started. This is where we're at. So guess what? And when you have that knowledge, once again, let's go back to that. When you up that knowledge curve, you can write your own price tag. And that's what I did. You know, I'm mean? like, look, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm not doing anymore. This is what I started doing. This is where I'm at. So you have to know where you started from, where you at. Well, started where you started from and where you at. In the middle is where you're going. And you... Right. And a lot of people I see, they don't get out of the beginning stage yes. because they smashing and grabbing every piece of money that they can get. It ain't. Look, now you now you run out of time. Now you have no time because you want to get this right here, 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 this right here. You have no time to, to even hone your craft. You have no time to even spend it with family, even enjoy what bread you got. And, you know, and that's one thing I said, look, I ain't gonna lie. I was scared as well when I said, OK, well, look, because I remember my minimum was free. <laughs> that was my tattoo minimum free. You know what I mean? And it went from free to, OK, look, I have a fifty dollar minimum. Then it went from fifty dollar minimum to, OK, look, I have a hundred dollar minimum. Then it went to, OK, look, I have a fifty dollar deposit and a hundred dollar minimum. Then it went from, OK, I have a hundred dollar deposit. And a three hundred dollar minimum. It's all about that progression, but you can't expect people to pay that if you don't offer a a quality service and a constant service. You know what I mean? And that's what I chose to do. I'm like, look, let me let me let me go ahead and focus on these clients right here. You know what I mean? Let me focus on these clients right here, so I can be constant and I can be quality. I'm not focusing on twenty other people a day, or ten other people a day, or five other people a day. I'm focusing on two. And and that's good work. People that having a niche, because then if you're doing a minimum of 300, that means you're doing bigger pieces, right? right. So having a niche is always going to pay more. That's why I tell people that a general practitioner, a family doctor, don't make as much money as a cardiologist. A cardiologist is focused on one organ, the main organ. And they are making quadruple the money that a lot of family practitioners just out here seeing 
any and everybody. So sometimes you have to find a niche. And once you grow that niche, then that's when you can get your worth. It's, and, and if like and like we said before, and the worth even comes with the time. You know what I mean? I don't have to be in a shop for 12 hours no more. I don't have to, you know what I mean, be in a tattoo shop from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock no more. You know what I mean? I take two clients. I'm out the door by eight. I can still make, I can still go to Outback and get me a salmon. You know what I mean? But before I couldn't do no, I had to go by McDonald's and grab a chicken sandwich. That was the only thing that was open. You feel me? And it's just like, you know, when, when you, when you minimize effort, you maximize profit, but at the same time, you have to be constant in your product. You have to be constant. Cause I tell everybody, look, you are one, you are one tattoo away from being a shitty ass tattoo artist. You are one hairdo away from being a, 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 a bad stylist. You know what I mean? You are one away. So you have to treat that first cut client like it's your last client and be constant with that. So as we wrap it up now. Um, Damn, it's been an hour. Almost. I swear. <laughs> it went by really quick. And I think I swear. You, Man, you we vibing out here. really good ideas and I hope that they are able to transfer this knowledge even if they are not in the art industry that they are able to transfer this knowledge over to whatever industry they're in because you can use these gems that you dropped tonight in the industry okay how am i going to make my competition my, my client, client. <laughs> that's it i mean because you look at you i'm going to hone in on my craft and monetize it so that i'm making money online Bingo. So that I don't have to do direct sales. You know, you don't have to. You don't have to be. I don't like to use that term on the clock, but you don't have to be doing. You, I don't have to be tattooing all day to make a bag, because you know you have to find that pivot. You have to find that pivot because we. I mean, I, I like to use Jay Z as an example. You remember when him and Nas was beefing? You know what I mean? You know, you know what Jay Z did. He signed Nas to uh he signed Nas to Rock Nation. He turned Nas from competition to an employee. And that's how you have to look at people. You know what I mean? They're not competition, they're potential clients. I'm not competing with nobody. And you know, and, and that's in and that's in any industry. Like even if you're doing hair, okay, cool. Guess what? I know her shampoo ain't this. Start your own shampoo. Get your own beard oil. Get your own skincare. Do this. Do it. whatever you may do. It's something in that arena that you could pivot and sell right back to that person who's trying to compete with you. And now they're not even competition no more. They are. They are clients. They employees. A lot of people are selling coaching services and mentorship, which is one of the most profitable businesses that you can have right now. Really. Sharing your knowledge, I mean, because the only thing that you got into it is your time, right? Yep. That's a fact. And so you don't have any supplies. That's all. That but I don't like talking to people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, look, I try to do a look, I try to do a seminar. I'm like, look, hey, 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 y'all listening. <laughs> well, I think you do well talking to people once you get started. Yeah, I be sounding like look. I be sounding like Joe Clark on Lean on Me. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! Look here. <laughs> but, but for real, I mean, no. And I and I actually because I know. I mean, you've been pushing me to do that, and I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna get off my ass. I'm gonna do it. Cause at the end of the day, like we just said, you only fail when you don't start. That's true. That's a fact. And if you don't like talking to people, you can sell now when they got Teachable and all these different platforms, right? Well, you can do doing. videos and sell the videos, and are you engaged with anybody? No. Oh, that sound like, that sound like OnlyFans. What the hell you got going on, man? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you trying to put me on OnlyFans, man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Erica trying to pimp me out of here. She trying to turn me from from a peer to a from a peer to a uh, yeah prostitute. <laughs> You know, it's 70-30, 70 my way. Oh, you hard. You hard. You hard on the whole. <laughs> Lord, 70-30, 60-40. 
<laughs> but yeah. we got, you gotta you gotta uh, wait till you get some more expertise in the digital. Look, look you had to buy me a couple outfits for that. <laughs> <laughs> look, you gotta keep it fresh now. <laughs> Seven and thirty, you gotta keep it fresh out here. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, if I would look, I mean, for the last, you know, the last thing, I mean, before we clock out, I tell anybody, man, the biggest failure is not to start. It's not to start, man, you know, because one thing I realized that separates, and when I say rich, I don't mean like monetarily. I mean, like, you know, like you say, with time, you know what I mean? Being able to, flexibility, you know, being able to do what you want to do when you want to do it, but at the same time, have that structure and that discipline to know what you have to do when you have to do it. You know, the biggest thing, if you don't try, man, you will never, I mean, on the other side of fear is accomplishment. If you get over that fear, I mean, you can accomplish anything you want to do. And that's all, you know what I mean? That's, I'm going to leave them with that because I'm out of yak. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for coming on and sharing your knowledge. And I hope that this um, will help somebody. And if it only helps one person, that's the mission, that's the goal to get somebody to, you know, boss up. Start it. Start. Yeah, the, the boss up like the motherfucking academy. <laughs> boss up like the academy. Hey, but look, February the uh hold on, I gotta check the date. I text you though, but February. I wanna okay. say the 12th. Okay. Yeah, the 12th. Yeah, we putting the minks on. Okay. Frank Luke, yeah, Frank Lucas shit. Yeah, yeah, we're going. Yeah. <laughs> you already know it. Look, I ordered my hat already. Okay. <laughs>